I feel good in the Lord. Isn't it good to feel good in the Lord? Yes. yes. Amen. It's, it's good to feel good in the Lord. Right. Amen. 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 So I'm coming to you from Romans chapter 8 this morning. Just starting right here. If you're taking notes, and I would encourage you to, have a pen and a piece of paper to jot some things down. You know very well that you hear me talking a lot about spiritual fathering. And I know that there's a lot of people that don't get it. And they don't, they don't get the whole message. They don't understand it. I'm going to try to bring some clarity to that today. I'm not going to try. I'm going to give you some clarity to it. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about the manifestation of the sons of God. Now, the Bible has, you know, in the church, we have talked about the manifestation of the Son of God. But I want to show you something that's in the Word of God that says that there's going to be a manifestation of the sons of God. Okay? Y'all don't look at me strange. It's right here in Romans chapter 8. I want you to look with me at verse 19. And I'm going to back up and then I'm going to read a couple other verses. But I just want to catch this one first first. Romans chapter 8 and verse 19 says, For the earnest expectation of the creature waits for the manifestation. Say that word with me. Manifestation. manifestation. Of who? Of the sons of God. Say that with me. The sons of God. The sons of God. April, could you hit the next page for me right here? Two different translations I want you to just look at with me. I'll put these up here for our benefit. This is from the Amplified, same verse. It says, for even the whole creation or all of nature waits expectantly and longs earnestly for God's sons. Say that with me. God's sons. God's sons. To be made known. To be made known. Waits for the revealing, the disclosing of their sonship. That's very important. Hmm. Let's look at this from the NCV. That's the New Century Version. That's most teen Bibles uh, carry that translation. It says, everything God made is waiting. Listen to that. Everything that God made is waiting with excitement. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Is waiting with excitement mm -hmm. for God to show his children's glory completely. Amen. Mm. Amen. Man, that just yeah. that lit up inside of me this week. The sons of God. There has been a shift in our season. There has been a shift in the season for the body of Christ. Not everybody will understand when there's a shift to a season, but that's all right. Many times we're slow to catch up. Sometimes people get stuck in seasons. You know, we see what we may, you know, deem as many divisions within the body of Christ. You know, we may say we have Methodist or Presbyterians or Baptist or whatever. We may see these things as divisions, but actually sometimes it is that there's a season and people get trapped in a season. And that season has produced for them a wine. And that wine has fermented for them and they, they drink of that wine. But God always is doing new things because we have new seasons. And Jesus said that with a new season, there will come new wine. And with new wine, you have to have a new wine skin. So things have to change. We can't put a new wine into an old wine skin. Why? Because God said both of them would perish. And God doesn't want them both to perish. Right. He wants them both to produce what they were intended to produce. Mm -hmm. So we have to see, first of all, that there, is, there are needful things in every aspect and in other seasons as well. But as God begins to move us into a new season, we have to transition. <laughs> this is the main point for us this morning, is that we have to transition. I'm telling you what this new season is about. This season is about transitioning in the mind and transitional thinking. There's going to be a transitional thinking that has to happen in you today, this morning. If you will hear my words, if you will hear what I'm saying to you, if you will receive what I'm about to put forth, you will hear that there's going to have to be a transition in my thinking. Say that with me. A transition in my thinking. Transition what is this transition? This transition is a thinking or not thinking as a servant, but as thinking as a son. Say that with me. Not thinking as a servant. Not thinking as a servant. But thinking as a son. But thinking as a son. It is time for the sons of God to manifest. Some of the things that I may say to you may be unfamiliar. 
than unto others they may be familiar, but we are not servants, but we are sons. Mm -hmm. We are not servants, but we are sons. Yeah. Jesus even put it this way in John 15, 15. He said, I no longer call you servants, mm -hmm. but I call you friends. Yeah. He said, a servant does not know what his master is going to do. That's right. But you know what I'm going to do. That's right. So Jesus was taking them in a transition of mind and thinking mm -hmm. from thinking like a servant to thinking like a friend. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm telling you that there's a transition in thinking that's happening right now in the kingdom of God. Why is this just now coming about? Because it's the season. It's the season for yeah. it. Amen. Everything has a time and a season under the sun. Yes, sir. Ecclesiastes t uh, tells us that to every purpose, there's a time and a season. Will we continue to serve? Absolutely. But we will not serve from a servant's perspective. That's we right. will serve because we are sons. That's I right. said we will serve because we are sons. That's right. Some people say, you know, well, uh, how does a son know how to serve? Well, here's the whole thing to this. A mature son will seek to serve the household and not himself. Uh, a mature son will seek yeah. to serve the household and not themselves. Amen. A mature son will seek to serve the household and not his son. Right. Why? Because any mature son comes to the realization that he not only just lives in the home, mm -hmm. and that he not only uh, consumes from the benefits of the home, but that he is actually an heir yeah. to the home. There you go. There he is go. an heir to the home. Amen. Therefore, he serves the interest of the household right. because he understands that eventually that this is going to be yeah. his. Right. Yeah. He is going to be the one right. that is overseeing it. This is why in the, in the scriptures in the New Testament that we begin to see that even there was a transition in the New Testament from, we saw from uh, disciples to apostles, and then the apostles began to transition into becoming fathers. And after we look in the book of Acts, we don't even see the word disciple appear. All the way from Romans to Revelation, you never see the, the word disciple appear again. You only see fathering and son, son and father, father, son. Why is this? Because there's something that we have to understand about this, that we ultimately are a family and that we are the family of God. Amen. We are not strangers. We're not right. pilgrims. Right. We're not even sojourners. Right. We're supposed to be so connected to one another yeah. that we, we are not just members of a body, but we are family together. Amen. And that we share something that is greater than even our own DNA. That's right. And it is a bloodline yeah. that is connected to the Son of God, mm -hmm. who is from the Father. That's right. And he came forth from the Father. Mm -hmm. And he was manifest in the flesh. Yes, it was. God manifested himself in the form of flesh. Yes. And yes, he humbled himself mm -hmm. in form of a servant. But yet he was still... The Son of God. That's right. Hallelujah. Amen. Man, this just this something. It does something inside of me. Mm -hmm. I want you to look at verse fourteen, so we can capture a couple of verses along with this. Revelation. Excuse me. Revelation. Romans eight and fourteen. <laughs> I'm going to jump to Revelation. Romans eight and fourteen says this: For as many as are led, say that with me. As many as are led. Many as are led. By who? The Spirit of God. Say this last part with me. They are the sons of God. They are the sons of God. They are the sons of God. I made myself a note. If you want to make this note, I'm going to give you seven points today quickly about practical application in this. The number one thing here is a son, a son is led by the Spirit. A son is led by the Spirit. A son is led by the Spirit. Now, if you've seen yourself as the servant of God, you know, you may be trying to repay a debt. You know, a, a servant could be a, a bond servant, someone who had, had gotten himself in debt. All of us had, had debt as, as sinners. We had a debt that we couldn't pay. And you may have in your mind that, you know, you're trying to, to pay God back. 
If I just serve God enough, then maybe he'll be happy. If, if I serve God enough, then maybe he'll be pleased with me. You know, uh, none of my sons, you know, that, that's not the way that they think. When my sons come into my home, they're very relaxed. You know, some of, some of my sons came into my home this past weekend, and they, they just open the refrigerator and pour themselves a drink and, and get themselves something to eat. And they don't ask. They just eat. That's right. Sons. They're sons. Amen. And they're comfortable in, in the house. Yeah, that's right. Now, let's look at this word on further. In verse 15, he says, For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. Thank you, Lord. You have not received the spirit of bondage unto fear. When you are a son, you're not afraid. That's I should have put that one in my notes. Amen. When you're a son, something... Something begins to click on the inside of you. If I could say this in any way to you today, because there's, there's a greater understanding that I have come to, and it is in being a son that you, you fear begins to evade you. That's right. My, my sons are not afraid at night. Amen. They may get, they may, you know, at times be fearful, but ultimately they know that dad is home. Yeah. Amen. They know that dad's here. <clears throat> And dad's not going to let anything happen to me. Because right. if somebody comes in that door at night, they're going to have to deal with daddy. Right. <laughs> I'm talking to you spiritually as yeah. well. Oh, yeah. Do you realize that when you accept your sonship, you know, servants didn't live in the house, they had their own house. That's right. That's right. Sons live under the roof of their father. Right. Amen. Right. Amen. And when you are a son, you know that daddy is in your house. That's right. mm. And when daddy is in your house, you don't have to be afraid. Because you know that daddy's going to take care of things. Mm -hmm. He says, but you've received the spirit of adoption. You, you've Lord. been adopted by God. Yes, I have. Whereby you can now cry, Abba, Father. We've read these verses of scripture probably many times. But you have to begin to see them in the light of who you are as a son. Verse 16, he says, for the spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. You are God's child. Amen. You need to say that. You need to believe that. You need to think that way. I am God's child. Right. You are not alone. Mm -hmm. You have a heavenly father. Mm -hmm. You have a heavenly father. Yeah. I am God's child. Mm -hmm. He says in verse 17, if you're children, if you're children, then you are an heir. That's right. That should get you excited just enough right there to know that you are an heir of God. You are an heir of the kingdom of God. You are an heir of the kingdom of life. You are an heir of the kingdom of, of righteousness. You are God's heir. Thank you, Lord. Amen. If you're the heirs of God, he says, you're joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we also may be glorified together. Verse 18. That's why Paul says this. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time. Right. How many of you been through some present sufferings? That's right. Amen. There's going to be present sufferings. That does not negate that I'm an heir. That's right. Just because I'm going through a time of suffering, just because I may be in a season of suffering, it never negates that I'm an heir of God. For some reason within the body of Christ, we don't believe that we can both prosper and have good success and yet be in times and seasons of suffering and great heaviness. That's right. The apostle Peter didn't believe this way. He said that though you are in a season of heaviness through manifold temptations, he says, yet you are full of glory and yet Amen. full of joy. Yes. Why? Because he understood the aspect of being a son of God. Amen. Not all seasons and times will be pleasurable, but all seasons can be prosperous for us. Even in the midst of a hard time and a difficult time. Ultimately, we know this. You know, I can look at, it, at Joseph as an example. He went through many trials, hardships, misunderstandings, and things that, that just uh, would baffle the human mind. Right. But ultimately, in the end, who stood? Right. He stood. Amen. He stood. Yes. And he stood because he knew that he was a favored son. Amen. 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 <coughs> now, Back to verse 19, he says, For the earnest expectation of the creature waits for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject unto vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who hath subjected in the same hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered. Listen to that. The creature, creation is going to be delivered. 
from the bondage of corruption Amen. into the glorious liberty yeah. of the children of God. Yeah. Let me tell you, dear sons of God, we are being concealed in this hour. Mm -hmm. We are being hidden in this hour. Yeah. Because it has not yet been revealed what you shall be. Okay. That's what Hebrews tells us. That's right. It has not been yet revealed what you shall be. Mm -hmm. You have been concealed by God. Yeah. But I want you to know that the deliverance that you have uh, accepted, the deliverance that you have received, and the adoption that you have been adopted with, and whereby that adoption is setting you free yeah. from even fear itself, Absolutely. and from the bondage of fear, and whereby in your spirit that you cry, Abba, Father, that same spirit that's on the inside of you yeah. is going to work and wrought yeah. deliverance yeah. in all of creation, yeah. Yeah. not just in your life, not just in the lives of your family, yeah. and not just yeah. in the lives of other people, but in creation itself. Yeah. God yeah. is bringing his people into the greatest, I believe, the greatest dimension of power yeah. that they'll ever walk in yeah. when they begin to walk in their true identity of who they are as a son of yeah. God. Yeah. That's right. When you begin to accept the identity of who you are, yes. you have to begin to accept that you are a son. Amen. This word exploded in me this week. I was on the phone with my spiritual father, and he said, in this season, you don't need to be concerned with anything else than just being a son. Mm -hmm. Just be a good son. Mm -hmm. Don't concern yourself with anything else but just be a son. Mm -hmm. Don't try to do anything else. Just be a son. That word began to explode in me this week. Just be a son. Just be a good son. I'm talking to you as daughter. When I say sons, I mean sons and daughters together, okay? Amen. Now, let's look on. Creation is groaning in verse 22. We know that the whole creation is groaning and it's travailing in pain together until now. Verse 23 is where I'll stop with this. And not only they, but ourselves also, which are have the first fruits of the Spirit. Even we ourselves are groaning within, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of the body. There will be a groaning until the body is redeemed. Mm -hmm. But yet in this groaning, there is going to be the manifestation of the sons of God. Look with me once again to verse 19, and then I'll move forward. The earnest expectation of creation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. What does this mean? What does this mean? This word here, manifestation, is the word apocalypsis. It literally means there will be something laid bare or be made naked. There will be something disclosed and it will be truth. There will, with this truth, come an instruction. And with that instruction, it will be concerning things that were before unknown. In other words, there's going to be things that were before unknown that are going to be made known. Yeah. And they're going to be known not yeah. through some other way. Right. They're going to be made known through you. Amen. The things of yeah. God are going to be made known through you. Amen. I'm talking to you today because you are this important in the creation, yeah. in all of God's mind, in all the greatness and unfathomableness of his mind. You are this it's important that God has chosen to reveal something about himself into creation through you. Amen. You are literally going yes. to become the expression of God in the earth. You're not just going to be the blessed of the Lord, but you're going to be the expression of God in the earth. You're going to be the expression of your Father. That's why the Bible tells us that Jesus was the express image of God. He was God expressing himself in his own image. Jesus is the image of the Father. That's why he said to Philip, he said, if you've seen me, you have seen the Father. Right. This is why this is so important to you as a son of God, as a daughter of God, because the world is going to see God through you. They're going right. I'm talking yeah. to you. You think that you're just a born-again believer? You think that, you know, you, you're just a church-goer? No, this is not the plan of God for your life. God's plan for you is not for you to be a pew-sitter, a church-goer, or a church-hopper, or whatever you want, whatever people are today. God's intention for you is to bring you into this season where you become, you are becoming. I said you are becoming. You are becoming the sons of God because you have to be become a mature son. When yeah. you become yeah. a son, you're a son. But that doesn't mean you're a mature son. This is a season in which God is going to 
bring his sons into maturity. The maturity that God has always longed for. Because you can't hand off keys to the immature. You can't hand off greatness to the immature. You can't hand off the things that are so vitally important to your heart to the immature. Amen. God is going to let you begin to hold new things. Things that were uh, before unknown and unrevealed. This tells us that there's going to be events that happen. There's going to be things that happen. There are going to be people that happen. There are going to be That's states. Right. Listen, there are going to be states that are going to be withdrawn from in the view. People are going to have a whole different view. of the, They're going to withdraw their view of some things, and they're going to put their view on something else. Why? Because when there's a manifestation, you when there is a new manifestation of God, you will draw away from that which is old, and you will draw away to that which is new. Then if you don't transition, you'll continue to drink old wine. And all that old wine will do is get you drunk on old religion. That's Amen. what we, we have That's become right. drunkards in the church because we've drank old wine. We just keep drinking old wine. But when God says, I'm bringing you into a new season, with a new season comes a new harvest. And with a new harvest comes new grapes. And with new grapes comes a, a new crushing. And with a new crushing comes a new juice. And when that juice comes forth, it has to be Begin to flow only into a new wine skin. It can only come into a, you can't put the the new into the old. It will burst the old. That's right. It will burst the old. And they'll both perish together. God's not interested in this season perishing. Amen. And he's not interested in, in the new wine of what he wants to put inside of you. You know, I had to sit down and ask myself these questions this week. Am I a new wine skin or am I old? Am I able to transition into what God... Am I able to transition into this season? And my earnest expectation that's growing on the inside of me says absolutely yes. I am able to transition because I'm a son and I don't see myself as a servant. I am God's son. I am an heir of the kingdom. I have to begin to talk. You need to begin to talk to yourself this way. You need to begin to say, I am his son. I am his seed. I yes. am not only accepted, but I am but I am loved. I am not just accepted by God. I am loved. I had to get into my Bible. I got to John chapter 1 and verse 16, and it says, and of his grace, you know, of his fullness, of his full of Jesus' fullness. We have all received grace for grace. We have all received grace for grace. How do you receive grace for grace? How do you how do you get grace for grace? That sounds like an equal exchange. If I give you grace and you give me back grace. Grace, for, that's not what it means. It literally means that you're going from a state of being accepted into a state of being favored. You've got to begin to see yourself. I'm God's favorite son. Oh, Lord have mercy. I'm going to talk too, I'm going to talk too big for your mind to accept, but you're going to have to accept it if you're going to, if you're going to accept the new season. If you're going to keep drinking old wine, then you're just going to see yourself as, woe is me, and I'm God's overlooked son. I'm not God's overlooked son. I'm God's favorite son. I'm, I'm the one when he, if God had a refrigerator, he'd have my picture put on it. And there he is. There's my son. Yeah. Right. Amen. I gave him grace instead of grace. I gave him good grace. Amen. I gave him favored grace. He's not just, God's not just accepting you. He's not just, you think that God's putting up with you. You've got to you've got to put that way thinking away from you. Amen. That's your thinking. God says you're thinking like you think. That's not how I think. You've got to transition your thinking to think like I think. Amen. It's hard to accept that. You know about why? Because many times we reject our own self. How can you reject whom God loves? That's right. Mm. I said, how can you reject whom God loves? That's right. Amen. Are you greater than God? Are you going to frustrate the grace of God? If God so loved the world, if God so loved you that he would give his only begotten son so that he could have more sons, why would God reject you? Why would God just accept you? If Jesus Christ would do all that he did, why would God just accept you and say, you know, you're, you're acceptable. I'll adopt you. You, you, that, you that little ugly kid <laughs> that nobody wanted at the orphanage. This is what's transitioning. Mm. You're transitioning from being orphan-minded. That's right. You're transitioning yes. from being orphan-minded to being son-minded, sonship. Yes, this God. is why this is so important. 
This is why the message of spiritual fathering is important in this hour. It's not about me and you. This is about God. This is about God and his son and that we are the reflection and the expressed image of it in the earth. That's right. We learn to be sons through both natural and spiritual fathers. That's why this is important. You don't have to learn how to be a son. I'm trying to teach my sons how to be sons. You know how I teach my sons to be sons? Without me being a son. The only way that I can teach them to be sons is if I myself am a son. That's why it's important for me to accept that whole thing. I have to accept it. I have to accept it into my mind, and I have to become a good son. Amen. You can't do what you've never done. You can't tell, you, you don't, listen, you can't tell someone how to do something that you've never done. That's right. I can only tell you what I, that's, a, that's how you teach from experience. That's why fathering and, and sons and daughters is so important. That's right. Because a father teaches by what his father taught him. There you go. That's why he says fathers bring up your children. That's the responsibility of a father. I believe, if I were to take this into our politics and everything else, we can turn this ship around. We can turn this country around. But it's going to take fathers. That's right. It's going to take, it's going to take the church to do this. The church did it before. They did it in the first great awakening. They did it in the second great awakening. It's time for us to have a third great awakening. Amen. And it's going to have to be Fathers accepting their role in their home, in the church, yes. both naturally and spiritually in the earth. Yes. If you look through, if you, you know, people say, is the Bible sexist? Well, no, it's not. But when you look through the lineages, it will say that so-and-so begot so-and-so, and so-and-so -so begot so-and-so, and Noah begot Shem, and Noah begot Ham, and Noah begot Japheth. Some people say, well, why didn't it mention his daughters? The Bible is not sexist because it was important for you to understand that you have to be begotten. You have to, that's the whole point. We see names. I see beget. You have to be begotten. Jesus is the only begotten son of God. You have to be begotten of a father. You may be born of a woman, but you have to be begotten of a father. You have to, why? Because a father is what brings up and brings out your identity. Right. He brings it up and he brings it out. You have to know who you are. When my, my sons, when we're in public, I'll say, stop acting like that. Don't you know who you are? You're a Williams. You don't act like that. You don't talk like that. Do I sound like that? Do I talk like that? No. That's their answer. No, you don't. Then what are you doing? What am I telling them? I am shaping identity. I am shaping identity. You can say, well, well that, seems, that seems oppressive. <coughs> no. If I let them run amok, do whatever they want to, they'll not only be a nuisance to me, but they'll be a nuisance to the whole world. Amen. And people will look at me and say, what kind of believer is this? that lets his children just run them up. No, that's where a father has to bring correction. That's where a father has to speak and he has to say, you don't do that. This is the whole importance of having fathers in the earth. God gave fathers something that's very powerful. It's called the word no. <laughs> no. Amen. You need somebody in your life that will tell you no. Yep. You need somebody, that's why I didn't do a Friday broadcast because I was told no. Amen. Don't do that anymore. Now I wasn't told no until I asked. There's a whole lot of things that you don't know until you ask. That's why God says ask and you receive. We walk around in ignorance because we are unwilling to ask. Asking indicates that you have to humble yourself. When you don't ask, you indicate that you know everything. That's right. 
Mm. I want to know what I don't know. Right. I want somebody to tell me. That's why I'm, I'm, I believe wholeheartedly in spiritual father. Because you have to have somebody in your life that knows what you don't know. Who does, who's been where you haven't been. And understands what you haven't understood. And you need somebody that you are accountable to. You can't be accountable to a brother. You know why? Because a brother cannot correct you. When my sons try to correct each other, it turns into a brawl. Oh, yeah. That's why we have so many problems in the church today. Because we got somebody that tries to correct somebody that's on an equal plane with it. You can't, you have to correct from above. That's right. That's why they couldn't accept Jesus. That's why the Pharisees couldn't accept Jesus. Because he was walking among them. They're like, who are you? What authority do you have? He said, well, I'll ask you a question too. John the Baptist, tell me about him. I found out this week. That all you got to do is throw John the Baptist in the mix, and it will mess the people up. <laughs> he, will, he messes people up completely. Because he's not in this system, and he's not in that system. He's a guy out in the wilderness saying, change the way you think. Amen. <laughs> people have a hard time with what they can't identify. People have a hard time with what they can't label. That's right. Well, you can put a label on me. I'm a son of God. Amen. I didn't say I was the son of God, but I am a son of God. That's right. And I don't need nothing else you need to know about me. That, that I am a son of God. And I have a spiritual father and I have a heavenly father. I don't have a natural father anymore because he passed on. I mean, he still, he, uh, he didn't evaporate. But nonetheless... Fathering is very important. God said the last words in the Old Testament. He said, I'm going to turn the hearts of fathers to the children and children to the fathers, or I'm going to come and smite the earth with a curse. This is very near to the heart of God. God says, if this thing don't turn around, I'm going to come and drop kick the world. I'm going to come and punt this thing away. This, this, is, this frustrates the, I said, this frustrates the heart of God. If you want to know what frustrates the grace of God, it is this very thing. Because God is a father, and that is the heart of God. God is a father. We've had, we've had earthly fathers, but we haven't understood our heavenly father. We shape the image of who God is by a father. There's people that they can't accept God as a loving, good God because they've never had a good or loving father. That's right. They don't have the image of a proper father in their mind. Amen. couple of last thoughts and then we'll go. What is this that Paul is talking about to the Romans? He tells us that this is what creation is groaning for. Creation is, creation is groaning for this. So what if you've been adopted? Who cares? Right. Little son. It doesn't change anything. That's right. Amen. You don't have a, well, this is my son and this is my adopted son. <laughs> That's right. This is my son and this is, well, we don't know what he is. <laughs> no, this is my son and this is my son. That's right. I know families that have adopted children. They got black ones and Chinese ones and white ones. And, and they ain't never said, well, this is my black son or my white son or my Chinese. They say, this is my son's. That's right. I don't think we get this whole adoption thing. Mm -hmm. Adopted. It's, it's legal. Yeah. Exactly. It's done. You're heir. When it's done, it's done. Amen. There's nobody going to stand up at, at the probate when the, all of the estate is in question and, and the, the, the natural sons say, well, that's an adopted son. No. They're going to have, leave. everything is even at that point. Amen. It's all even. Because in the will of God, all sons are the same. It don't matter if they're Jewish or Gentile. It don't matter if they're Greek or barbarian. It don't matter if they're male or they're female. I hope y'all just caught yes, all that. Sir. Yes. Because they're all the same. Yes. They're all the same in the eyes of God. Yeah, they look different. 
God likes variety. Yeah. So do you. You don't eat the same meal all the time. You don't do the same thing day in and day out. God likes variety of people because every person was created uniquely by him. Amen. Amen. Yes. Well, my last few things to write down for yourself here is your identity is everything. Your identity is everything. Because who you identify yourself is who you think you are. That's right. right. Knowing who you are. We watched a movie last night. It was Creed Two. That's a that whole April and I were talking about it this morning. The whole movie is about fathers and sons, and the the, the boxer Creed. You know, his daddy had died, and Rocky takes him on, and he becomes like his daddy to him. And when his daddy wasn't in his corner, he lost the fight. But when his daddy was in the corner, he won. I told April, I said, it's important who's in your corner, isn't it? Amen. It's important who's in your corner. Now, who was in his corner gave him all the confidence that he needed because he knew that somebody was with him. That's, why this is a, that's what this is about. Somebody is with you. Somebody, we have to be with one another. When you're family, you're with one another. That's right. Amen. Not against one another. Mm -hmm. We're not all the same. We don't all think the same. We don't all have the, the same opinions. We don't all have the same beliefs about things. But that's because we're all human. Is that all right? We're all human. But nonetheless... We're sons. Amen. This offended the Jews. This offended the Pharisees when Jesus said that he was the son of God. What? Why? Why is that so offensive? Why would it be so <coughs> offensive for someone to say that they were the son of God? Because in their culture, this is how they <coughs> think about it. And we have lost this. The son is the same as the father. Mm -hmm. He is the same. In nature and character. Yeah. He is the exact same. He is a replication of. That's why Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Philip said, I want to see the Father. Show me the Father. You've seen him. No man can see God and live. But you just saw him. Haven't you known me, Philip? I've put on flesh. Have I been with you so long? When somebody wants to see God, who's he going to show them? If y'all say Jesus, I'm going to smack you. When God wants someone to see him, who's he going to show them? Me. He's going to show them you. Because where is he at? That's right, Chauncey. He's in you. That's hard for people to accept because they say, well, we need to look unto Jesus. Well, we have been. We have been looking unto Jesus. The church has been looking unto Jesus. But the world does not see Jesus. They see you. That's right. And they won't see Jesus until you manifest as a son. That's right. Did you get that, Elijah? They won't see Jesus until you manifest as a son. When you manifest as a son, they will see God in you. Ooh. They see God in you. They see God. They I, listen to me real closely. I'm gonna close my Bible so y'all ain't just. They will see God in you. Amen. Jesus said, "How will they know? How will they know? How are they going to know that God is among you?" One all important word: love. That's the true mark, character, and nature of God. Amen. Is that he loves. Yes. He loves. He loves. 
And that's what the world is longing for. And that's what the world is looking for. They're not just looking for acceptance. They're not just looking for tolerance. They are looking for love. They'll do anything to get love. They'll become homosexual. They'll do anything to try to feel that place where they're, they'll do drug. They'll do anything just to be loved. People will do anything just to be loved. I said they will do anything. Right. They'll join a cult just to be loved. If they can find somebody or something that makes them feel. People remember how you make them feel. Oh yeah. You need to learn, listen to that real closely. They may not remember what you said. They may not even remember your name. But they will remember how you made them feel. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's how pe people are. People are. The world is blind. It's trying to feel its way through the world. And when they feel love, boy, they'll move to it. <laughs> Amen. That's why Jesus said the, the Pharisees were just blind leading the blind. And they'll both fall into a ditch. Because mm. the world is trying to feel its way until its eyes are open. And you've been trying to do the same thing. This is a day and this is an hour when there's going to be an eye opening. The disciples had this question. They said, man, why was this man born blind, Jesus? Did he sin? Did his parents sin? Jesus said, it's none of the above. This was done for the glory of God. That baffles the mind. That blood. People said, what? Many people have been born into the kingdom blind. But God says that you, the only way that you can ever see the kingdom is that you have to be born again. That's right. There is an aspect, I'm telling you right now, there's going to be an eye open, and I speak it over you. I speak it to every person that's listening to this by Facebook. There is an eye opening, an awakening that is coming to the sons of God. That, that you are a son. Listen to it. You are a son. What I'm speaking to you, they are not words. This word is life to you. That you are a son received. You are a son. You are a son. You yes. are God's son. Yes. You are God's love. You are God's beloved. You're not just accepted. You're the favor. You are a favored son. You are a favored son. Let that ring in your spirit. Let it ring in your ears. You are favored. God has favor upon you. He has set his favor upon you. He has favored his righteous cause. He is favoring you. Amen. God is favoring you. Some of you, it, you, you got that unlovable spirit that just wants to resist that. And God says, no, no, you are mine. Yes. You are part of my family. Thank you, Lord. <coughs> You are part of the family. That's why it's so important for us to receive and to have a spiritual family. Yes, sir. With a spiritual father that has an understanding of what is going on. I can trace spiritual lineage now. I have a spiritual father. Who has a spiritual father? Who had a spiritual father? I trace mine all the way to Oral Roberts. That's as far as I know. Y'all probably don't know your great, 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 great granddaddy either. But I can trace it. I can trace it. Because it's spiritual DNA. Amen. And it comes down the line. It comes down to you. What does that tell me? Man, there's going to be, I've seen in my family now, my, my spiritual family, I've seen healing. I've seen wisdom. I've seen impartation. What does that mean? Those are the things that are coming down through my lineage. I become an inheritor of those things. Yes, Do you hear what I'm telling yes. you? This is why people people will pay conference fees and, and run over here and run over there and do this and try and trying to get a, somebody to teach them how to prophesy. If you are the son of a prophet, who is the son of a prophet, there's always a prophet's reward. Mm -hmm. Amen. Lord, I'm going to drop this bomb on you right here. You got to receive that. There was a widow whose husband was a prophet. Her husband had died, and she had no way of living. She had no sons. Elisha came to her, and she asked him if she could, "Can I get some help from a prophet?" He said, "Go and get every vessel you can, and fill it with oil." 
And when those get, just keep pouring and keep pouring and keep pouring. Listen to me. There's always a reward Amen. that comes down. There's always a reward that just keeps, it keeps coming and keep coming and keep coming. There is a spiritual lineage that begins to fall down to you. Are you with me? Listen to what I'm telling you. If I can sit here and trace my spiritual lineage now, that's how Isaac received blessing from Abraham. That's how Jacob received blessing from Isaac. There, the blessing began to multiply. Amen. It says that Isaac moved into that land and God prospered him and he prospered him. This is what the word says. He prospered Isaac and he pros prospered him so much that he became prosperous even a hundred times more than he was before. Mm -hmm. You ever read that in Genesis? It says he prospered him three times in one verse. God prospered him where he was prospering and made him prosperous a hundred <laughs> times more than what he was before. Amen. You need to say that with me right as I close here. A hundred times more than he was before. Why? Because God was honoring his word to Abraham. That's right. When God speaks a word to your father, that word is good for you too. When you have a lineage, it's good for you. Y'all ain't get man, y'all y'all ain't get that. You think you're just trying to get yours. No, I'm gonna get mine and my daddy, just like Elisha did. That's how he got double portion. Because he called Elijah father. He not only received what God had for him in this lifetime, but he received also which was before him. Amen. That's right. My 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 my. Mm. I ain't going to just receive mine. I ain't looking for just mine. I'm looking for mine and all of those that were before me. It's coming down to me because I'm heir to this. That's right. I'm heir to this. And I'm not the only heir. I got brothers that are heirs to this. Mm -hmm. Love you, Arlen. Amen. Arlen Smith is my brother in the Lord. He's like my big brother. You know, he's like he's my big brother. No. All right, I'm going to close. Hey, I'm done early today. We got done before 1230. Wow. Isn't that glory? Yeah, we're going, we're going to eat some good lunch now. Amen. Not long enough. Well, I'm going to close this in prayer. I want you to be excited in your spirit that you are a son. You don't need to think anything else this week. I'm a son. I'm a daughter. Just let that get in you. Let it just get in you, Joy. Let it get in you. I am his daughter. <coughs> Woo! Woo! Ain't nothing my daddy won't do for me. <laughs> do you know who I am? Amen. I mean, it makes you walk around differently. Oh, yeah. I ain't saying you get like Absalom and <coughs> think you're just going to take over daddy's kingdom. But you're like Solomon. Be wise. Amen. Be humble. You, this is going to be yours and nobody can take it from you. That's right. Because you are son. Amen. Amen. Father, thank you today. Thank you. Thank you that as we enter in to this season, that we receive new wine. We receive new wine skins. To be able to hold this. This won't be based on anything that was prior or before. That season is past. That season is over. It's gone. Thank you, Lord. For we drank of that wine. Mm -hmm. but now it's time for a new wine. And a new season. And a new harvest. It's time for the new. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's time for the manifestation of the sons of God. I can sense just creation growing, saying, come forth, be revealed. They want to see. They want to see because they know that their deliverance is held within this. I thank you for that, God, that we hold the keys not only to other people's deliverance, but also other people's adoption. There's going to be people unlocked because of this. I thank you for that. They're going to see you in us. It's going to finally be revealed. It's going to finally come forth. And I thank you for that today. 
In Jesus' name. Amen. You are a son. Say that with me. I am a son. I am a son.